So let's talk about lockets. So lockets is under um, it's the combination of um, free for motion and linear motion. Although free for motion is under uh, is also under linear motion. So the question is saying a locket moves straight upward starting from rest with an acceleration of 129.4 meters per second squared. It runs out of fuel at the end of four seconds and continues to coast upward reaching a maximum height before falling back to earth but a find the rocket's velocity and position at the end of four seconds but b find the maximum height the rocket reaches but c find the velocity the uh, the instant before the rocket crashes on the ground so this is supposed to be ground, not allowed. Okay. So it is important for us to come up with a free body diagram. What is happening here? So here is the locket. I'll say this is the ground. Okay. So here is the locket. I'll just say this is my locket. Now this locket is going in this direction. Now I've been told that the acceleration when it was going up, so it will go from here all the way to there, then it comes down. So here is the locket now, it's down. Okay. So from this point all the way to this part, I'll call it phase one. Now, phase one, we have acceleration, which is 129.4. So now, from this point, when it was going from this point here, going up, I'll call it phase two. Meaning, under phase two, it was going in the influence of gravity, where g is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. Now another thing which we need to know is that this is going to be our maximum height from this point all the way down here. This will be our maximum height. So I'll call that H max. That is our maximum height. Now from here we can see that if this is the maximum height at the maximum height, the final velocity at that point is zero. Okay. What else do we know? Now, this is the information we should have for now. So the first question is saying, okay, so from party, from phase, uh, from zero here all the way to phase one, we have the time. So let me just say the time, which is time one, which is for phase one. We have been told that it is four seconds. That is the time for phase one. But we have not been told the time for phase two. Okay. So the question is find the locket's velocity and position at the end of four seconds. So that is part A. So part A has got two questions. The velocity and the position. The position is just basically the distance. So now we start with the velocity. According to the information we should have, they are saying that it started from rest meaning the initial velocity is zero. So our initial velocity has to be zero. The final velocity at phase one, we are talking about the final velocity at this point, is the one we are trying to find. That's why the question is saying, find the locket's velocity and position at the end of four seconds. So it is the, the final velocity in phase one. So, which, which formula can I use? I want to find the final velocity. I have the time. Okay, which is 4. What else? I have the acceleration, which is 129.4. I don't have the distance. Therefore, I can use uh, the first equation to say the V final is equal to the V initial plus A T. 
my goal is to find the final velocity. So I'll say the final velocity will be the initial is zero. The acceleration we have been told that it is um, 129. Okay, 129.4 time the time is 4. So the velocity, the final velocity will be 129.4 times 4. So the final velocity is 517.6 meters per second. That is the final velocity for phase 1. Okay. So I can put it here. That is part A, 1. It is uh, the final velocity is 517.6 meters per second. Okay. Now, part 2 is saying we need to find the position, which is the distance. We have the initial. Okay. So, I can use this formula to say the distance will be equal to the V initial times T plus half. Now in this case we have the acceleration then T squared. The initial acceleration is zero or the initial velocity sorry, is zero. So this is going to be our zero. So I have half times 129.4 times 4 squared. Meaning my distance in phase 1 is going to be half is 0 0.5 times 129.4 times 4 squared. So I'm getting my distance to be a 1035.2 meters. That is my distance in phase 1. So part 2 our distance is uh, 10.5.2 meters. We are done for part M. Now we go to part B. Now part B is asking us to find, is saying, find the maximum height the locket leashes. So at the maximum height, we know that the final velocity is what? Is zero. Now we are going to find first we know the, the the distance from this point here when it was moving with acceleration of 129 all the way to this part. We know the distance to so say it is 1035, which is 1035.2 meters. Now we need to find the distance from the distance for phase two. So to find the distance for phase two, we need to start from this point all the way to that point. Now at this point we know the ax the, the the velocity already to say it is 517.6 meters per second but the final we know it already is zero so our initial now is going to be this velocity okay when it was going up now when the fuel um from this point here when it's saying it lands out of fuel meaning from this point now it was moving under the influence of gravity all the way to the maximum height that's where now the g is negative 9.8 meters per second because it was mo uh, it was moving under the influence of gravity so it was moving against the gravity that's the reason why the g will be negative so now at this point i'm going to use i want to find the maximum height so i need to find the height for phase two for phase one i have it already this this distance here is for phase one so when i find the, the distance for phase two i need to add it to phase one that will, that is going to be my maximum height so the distance for phase two since we don't have time for phase two then i can use the third equation where we say the v final squared is equal to the v initial squared plus two now in this case it's not a is g 
then I have d. So the final velocity is zero, we know it already. The initial we have, so I can just put it like this, is going to be like this. Here we have plus, I can shift v to the other side, I'll have this. Then two, now g is negative 9.8, D is the one we are trying to find for phase 2. So what I'm going to do now here is the initial ve the velocity now, which was the final, which is going to be 517.6 squared has to be equal to, this is going to give us negative 19.6 D. We divide both sides by negative 19.6, even here by negative 19.6. So negative and negative will go. So these will cancel. So I have my D to be equal to 517.6 squared. Then divided by 19.6. So this is giving me... Uh, 13,668.86, so I can just put 9 meters. That is the distance for phase 2. Now, to find the maximum distance, I have to add the distance for phase 1 and the distance for phase 2. So this is the distance for phase 2. So I'll say the H max, which is the maximum height, it has to be, so I can call this one D1 and then this one D2. So I can say D1 plus D2, which is going to be a 1035.2 plus 13,668.9. So our maximum height is 1035.2 plus... 13668.9 So our final answer is um, 14704.1 meters That is the maximum height Okay So this maximum height I can just put it here here we just say the H max is fourteen thousand seven hundred and four point one meters. Okay, so now we can go to part C. So part C is saying, find the velocity, find the velocity, the instant before the locket crashes on the ground. So now they want us to find the velocity just before the locket crashes the ground. Now we are going to get this one as initial velocity to say it's a zero. Then now we want to find the final velocity. But to do that, we don't know the total time. Now we need first to find the total time. So to find the total time, what are we going to do? We are going to say, we are going to use the second equation. The H max, the maximum height is equal to the in initial velocity times time times half gt squared. Our goal is to find the time. Now the initial velocity when it was coming from the top here, at this point, is going to be zero. Therefore, I don't expect to have that. So I'll say, to remove a half, I can do times 2 everywhere. So I can say times 2. So this is going to be 2 h max is equal to g t squared. We divide both sides by g, both sides by g, then these two are going to be cancelled. So I have t squared will be equal to 2h divided by g. Then we square both sides, we'll have 2h 
divided by g. So let's plug in the values. So t will be equal to the square root of 2 times the maximum height. We have said it is 14,704.1. Then we divide this by g, which is 9.8. So my t will be equal to 14,704.1 times 2, we divide it by 9.8, then we get the square root. So the time is 54.779, which I can just say 0.78 seconds. That is going to be our time. Now, after finding the time, we can now find the velocity just before it hit the ground. So to find it just before it hit the ground, we can use the second uh, equation where we say the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus gt. Now, since it was coming, uh, it was going toward the gravity, we can g is going to be positive. So we are trying to find the final velocity. The initial now is 0 plus g is 9.8 times 54.78. So the final velocity is 54.78 times 9.8, which is going to give us 536, 536.844 meters per second. Now, it was going toward negative y relation. Therefore, the velocity has to be negative. Remember, when it was going up, the velocity was positive. This guy here, the first part we found that the velocity was 5, 517. So now here you say, the velocity just before it hit the ground is negative 536.8 meters per second. So that's the answer for part C. Okay, so that is it for this problem.